Greetings from Boston. Welcome to Tennis Talk Daily. My name is Aaron Knapp. We're doing something of a post-mortem on just what happened to Roger Federer in his opening round match at the Miami Open, where he fell to the 21-year-old Australian Thanase Kokonakis in three sets. It was a close match. The match saw Federer struggling to produce answers to Kokonakis' one-two punch, the big serve, and the big forehand. Federer had a hiccup in one of his own service games in the second set, which sort of handed the second set to Kokinakis. But mainly, Roger did protect his serve, and the problem was that Federer could not find the edge necessary to find an inroads into Kokinakis' service games and was unable to break Kokinakis at the key times. That's the reason why Federer lost. Of course, Federer made errors, committed a few mishits, and had some other problems, was not quite playing to the level that we're used to seeing. On the other hand, there was some great tennis from Federer as well. It was a close match. So thank you so much for your comments with regard to this match and trying to figure out just what happened. A lot of folks have said that they think Roger's just tired, and I think it's a great comment. Remember, he played a lot more tennis this year than he had last year, at this time. He lost in the first round to Dubai last year, was all rested up for Indian Wells. This year it was a little different. There was a lot of pressure on him at Rotterdam. Remember, he attained the world number one and then went on to win that tournament and was not as rested uh, and with perspective uh, as he was last year entering Indian Wells. He played some great matches at Indian Wells, but by the end, something had happened. I think he was tired. He wasn't excited about winning to the extent that he is usually. He didn't want to be in Miami, it seemed, and he just couldn't get excited about winning the Miami Open. I think that's what happened. It's a Masters level tournament. It's not a Grand Slam. I just don't think it was that important to him. And maybe he just said something inside of him just said, you know, let someone else have it. Let Delpo have it. And I think Delpo is kind of on the march here. It looks like he might take the Sunshine Double. That'll be an exciting event, an exciting development in professional tennis that I want to look at. But with respect to Federer, listen, he's coming back. He will be back. He will be back and dazzling uh, on grass in no time. And he will be able to get fired up about taking his ninth Wimbledon title. Of course, he is the greatest grass court player of all time, putting aside Dustin Brown, but he's the greatest grass court player of all time, and Federer will give us some great tennis soon enough. He'll be back on the court giving us that beautiful Federer tennis artistry. So it's no big deal for him. This Kokinakis match, he rolls with the punches. He said he was kind of lost out on the court. He was trying to find his way, and I think that's kind of appropriate. He just didn't have his mental game together. That was the problem. He wasn't in it to win it, or something, some part of him wasn't in it to win it. So I think that's what it comes down to. He'll be back he'll have the fire for Wimbledon and maybe even the U.S. Open. So Federer has things already in perspective, probably because he's been doing this so long. But Thanase Kokonakis, I'm not sure he has the perspective. He might be getting sort of a little cocky. Um, Now, he did lose to Fernando Verdasco and is out of the Miami Open. So it was kind of a flash of brilliance that he had. And uh, now he's out. I'm not sure about his future. But he's kind of this big guy. He brings a big game. He's got the big serves. He's kind of big and muscular in a way. Australian. You can imagine him getting kind of cocky. You know, he wears his hat kind of like this, kind of cocked off to the side like... (laughs) Federer doesn't know how to deal with his Aussie. So how do you beat Roger Federer? Well, you give him a big forehand right into the eye. Right straight into the eye. And then right into the side, the waist. And then into his thigh, too. And then you can give him a backhand right in the donger. Federer doesn't have an answer to shots in the donger. 
And I think that Thanase might be getting a little bit cocky. Well, the Verdasco match maybe gave him a little piece of humble pie, but he probably does think he's something special, doesn't he? Well, I don't think he's that special. I'm not so optimistic about his future. He's not consistent, and he got a little bit lucky. Nevertheless, I wish the best for him. Again, I'm not convinced that he is going to be a top 10 player. He's young. We'll see what happens. But for now, let's just say that Federer was not playing up to the level that we usually see him play. And he was not displaying that edge that he needs to get into people's serves, to start contending against the servers. And that's what he needs in matches against a guy like Del Potro, a guy like Kokinakis. So Federer will be back, folks, but we have so much more tennis to cover. And Del Potro, again, is marching through this Miami Open. If he does score the Sunshine Double, it's going to be a significant development. This might be Del Po's time, and he's a great player, so we have to study him more. Of course, we have a lot more to talk about with respect to Federer. Just because he's taken a break doesn't mean that we don't have anything to talk about. We have, in fact, more to talk about, lots more to talk about. So let me know what you think in terms of the match with Kokinakis. Let me know what you think about Federer's decision with respect to the clay court season. I do think that we need to respect his decision. He's getting tired. He doesn't want to play on clay. He doesn't have fun on clay. It's so important that he has fun. He's got to be challenged, and he's got to have fun. He wasn't having fun in those last couple of matches at Indian Wells. He wasn't having fun in that first match at Miami, although at Miami it was interesting because he seemed to have kind of found a balance. He almost seemed like he knew he was going home. He wanted to go home, and he knew he was going to go home. Mirka was in the audience, which is a little unusual. Maybe they had decided, you know, we need to go home. <laughs> We can't stay in Miami. This is over. I'm too tired. I'm not happy. I'm bored. And when he's unhappy, when he's bored, when he's not having fun, he's not going to play great tennis. So we need him to take a break. We need him to get perspective so that he can start having fun again. Because when he starts having fun, he's unstoppable. He's unbeatable. And he, if he's having fun, he'll take his ninth Wimbledon. He'll go on. He'll take another U.S. Open. And he will clean up and slay this year. So let's give him time. But let's talk about him while he's away. He's our favorite tennis player. He's still the GOAT, whatever happens. Rafael Nadal is currently the number one, but you know what? Federer could get a gift during the clay court season if Nadal doesn't perform and might be the beneficiary of the number one without doing anything whatsoever. So lots more tennis talk to come. I'm signing off for now. Bye-bye.